Hi, I'm Willie and welcome back to my channel. Thank you to everyone for being here. Uh, in the last video, I dropped um, a list of some of the videos we're going to do and I'm working on scripting out some of that content, trying to make um, the, the videos as thorough as they possibly can be. A lot of these videos I do are, are from the hip, such as this one tonight. I haven't practiced any of this, so we're going to go through it live together. But thank you everyone for being here. We're getting close to that 10,000 subscriber giveaway. And we're giving away a USG3 brand new in the box and an 8 port uh, 150 watt Unify switch brand new in the box. So I'm going to be releasing those details soon. I've had a lot of good feedback, so I'm just kind of shoring that up. Tonight, uh, what I want to talk about is, you know what this is. So this is a USG3. And here, you're going to see that it's got a console port and it's got the reset button right there. But really, what the heck happens when you push that? And that's what I'm going to show you. This is kind of a, you know, you, we're just going to kind of learn about what's going on in the background. Sometimes it's really nice to understand what's happening. So I have a USG in the, uh, over on the rack. It's adopted. I want to make some changes to it anyway. So what we're going to do is, thanks to my friend Dennis, I have a config cable because I have some ASAs. And uh, we're going to be doing some videos with ASAs. Um, you know, I already have one ASA configuration video. It's way, 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 way back there. You can find it. Uh, it's how to configure an ASA. But uh, we're going to do some real ASA configuration videos. But uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, you know, to do this, if you want to follow along, you're going to need a, U, a USG3 that you don't mind factory defaulting, and you're going to need a config cable. So this one is a Cisco config cable, but typically these are uh, rollover cables. So um, when you look at an Ethernet, it's it's truly rolled, and then it's going to go to this uh, serial to USB. Now you can buy uh, console cables that are one piece that have a USB here, and then just have this console connection um, down on the end. So you can buy those if you use my Amazon affiliate link that's down there. You can find those at uh, Amazon. But the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to shrink this guy down. Um, we're going to plug this into the computer, and then we'll pull up Putty. We'll go over those settings real quick, and uh, then I am going to press the reset button, and we're going to see what happens. So uh, hang tight. Okay, so in preparation for this, um, I've got my controller up, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump, jump over to uh, Control Panel and System, and we're going to bring up the Device Manager so that when we plug in our, our USB, we can figure out which COM port it's going to be. So we'll let this guy get uh, finished getting upset here. And it's definitely not going to be a network adapter. It should show up under like COM, COM ports and stuff like that. So I just plugged the adapter in. My, uh, you can see my computer came up and it looks like it is installing the necessary files on my system. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this real quick and then uh, as soon as that is installed, we'll be right back. Okay, so that took about three minutes uh, to install and it is COM3 and I know that because it, it flashed up there and if we explain, expand ports under device manager, we see prolific USB to serial COM port. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to open up Putty. And for this, is going to be a serial connection, and it's going to be COM3. And our speed is actually going to be 115.200. Now, whether you're on an edge router uh, or a USG, they use the same um, connection settings. So uh, it's also 8919 and most of your other networking devices are all that way as well. But uh, if you're used to working with other vendors, that's where you're probably used to seeing 9600 baud, um, and, and you gotta slow it down so you can keep up with those, with those devices. But the Ubiquiti stuff lets us connect at uh, 115.2. So now what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna take the other end of my console cable and uh, I'm going to plug it into where it says console. Now, obviously, this one's not powered up, but you see site one USG 
uh, is. So this is the one that we're gonna be factory uh, defaulting. So um, we will also need our handy dandy um, reset tool, which is right here. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and we're gonna connect to it and see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm plugged in and we're gonna go ahead and open this. And now it's open, we'll hit enter. Welcome to Edge OS Site One USG. Uh, so now uh, our login should be the same as the credentials in our controller. And so um, it's just like being SSH'd in, except now you're at the console. So you're going to get a lot more information. And um, before we go too far, I want to let you know this is useful for troubleshooting. So if uh, you're ever troubleshooting with me or with Ubiquity Support or uh, with Chris or with uh, Tom, Lawrence, or any of us that deal with Ubiquity, sometimes we'll have you get in there and Ubiquity Support will often... Uh, ask you to do a logging session for this so they can capture some information and figure out what's going on. So it's not just useful uh, for uh, uh, seeing what happens during a factory default, which is what we're using it for. Um, but some places, uh, you know, they want you to use a serial connection. You have to have a serial connection. All kinds of reasons. But let's get back over to this. So here we are. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my reset tool and I am going to hold the reset button in and we're going to watch what happens on the screen. Okay, so the light went off. You see that uh, it, there was a broadcast message. The system is going down for a reboot. So let's watch what happens. We're going to keep a connection to this and watch this as it goes down to see what happens. So uh, when it comes back up, we should have no configuration. And you can see right now it is stopping the free radius uh, daemon. Looking for a valid bootloader. Got uh, the U-boot in here. So this is the stuff that, that you don't get to see. This is all the stuff that's happening in the background when this when this boots up that you, you don't see. It's all hidden from us. So if you look through here, you can see things about the processor. You can see things, um, you know, about the, the flash. You can see all kinds of physical information. So you can see here, SDA, so this is a, a USB 2.0 disk. So if you remember, I showed you it's got that, that flash drive. That's the flash drive that's inside that guy, that 4 gig flash drive. And I've never done this. So this is the first time that I did this. And if it said something up at the top about factory default, we may have missed it. But I don't. I don't think I saw that. So, looks like no, a little bit of a error with itself here. So now it's uh, generating DSA, entering run, run level two, starting free radius, starting our route, routing daemon, starting edge OS router. I don't think these, I don't think the USB uh, serial connectors, I've got one buried around here somewhere, but uh, Dennis sent me another uh, uh, USG, or not USG, another ASA, and he sent one with it, so I do appreciate that, and I hope you're feeling, buddy, uh, feeling better, buddy.
I just cannot talk tonight. So we can see that this thing is still starting up here. So um, right now I've got a white, you know, the white flashing light. So we are still with, you know, in that initializing mode. So when you, whenever you do this and you're like, oh man, what's taking so long for my USG to boot up? This right here is what's taking so long for your USG to boot up. Get your console cable, try it out. It's almost uh, like watching paint dry, but you know there are some some things happening here. Um, once again, the settings, the port speed was one fifteen two hundred. Uh, eight, nine, uh, one, and none, and now we're back up, and it looks like this is all default. So let's try it here. UBNT, UBNT, and there it is. So this guy is factory default, and now he does have an IP address on the uh, on the WAN. So we could uh, bring this up, so you can see the heartbeat's been missed. So we'll bring this guy up and go over here, manage device, we'll forget the device. We'll go back over here. I wonder, I don't see anything. Let's see if we see anything that shows us. If somebody knows what in this process um, triggered the the factory default. I mean, obviously we know that pushing the button, we wait for the LED lights and all that, but I'm wondering if there's something from the output that shows us that, or if it just triggers something. And one of these lines may tell us, I don't know if you know, please put that down um, in the comments. Could have some, I, I don't, I just don't know where it's at. Somebody's got to know where it's at. So it'll be interesting to see which one of those lines um, take care of that. So, but now what we can do is we, well, first let's try this ping cloudkey.howx5.com. We can ping that. So we'll do a set inform. So we'll set the inform. We'll pop back over here to the controller. Refresh, pending adoption. Go ahead and adopt that guy. We'll go back over here. We'll hit our up arrow. We'll set that in form again. And uh, the adoption should go pretty smooth. So that's what happens. That's what happens when you um, when you do that. So we can actually, um, after it's adopted, we can actually do one more quick thing. We could just do um, a reboot. And it's probably going to look very similar. Um, so we may go ahead and skip that. Um, is there anything happening during the provision? There's nothing being out, output to the console. Um, I'm sure there's a command we could run where we could get some more of that. Um, but that's kind of it. That's kind of what I wanted to show you. Let's see if this guy's uh, provisioned yet. Still provisioning. So if we take a look at the running processes, we might be able to see what is going on here. So if you know what in the output that we saw triggers it, you know, to wipe that configuration, let me know down in the comments. So uh, that's it for tonight's video. We are going to get on to some other technical stuff. Uh, later in the week. But if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Please use my affiliate links down below to keep a couple bucks rolling in the channel and uh, keep new gear coming in. And we will see you in the next video.